Hello, internet friends. Today we are gonna talk about wet palettes and how to use them, how to set them up, how to learn their deepest, darkest secrets. Uh, if you don't know, a wet palette is basically just a, just a plastic tray of some sort, some type of sponge or water holding thing, and then a piece of paper over the top that you put your paints onto when you're painting um, miniatures with acrylic paint. So this is, this is the uh, Masterson's Stay Wet Handy Palette. It's most, probably the most readily available one that's on the internet, it's like 10 to 12 bucks, depending where you get it. Highly recommend it. You can also make your own out of Tupperware, but they're not expensive, they last forever. I would buy one if you can get one for under, under 15 bucks. It's gonna, you're gonna have it forever. This one's nice because it comes with a sponge. If the sponge gets messed up, uh, they make, you can buy the same sponge on um, Amazon. I'll put a link in the description and replace it. But yeah, the sponge is, as long as you rinse this out every like five to seven days, you'll be all right. Uh, so let's show you how to set this up. To set it up, you're gonna, this comes with the sponge, it comes with this, it does not come with the paper. Um, there's parchment paper you can buy for this that's a little bit like, it's like acrylic parchment paper that comes from this brand from Masterson's. It's a little bit too thick and a little bit too, like it, it's almost like construction paper. Uh, I find it too thick to use for, for um, acrylic uh, miniature painting, but you can do what you want. Uh, a better choice, I think, is the Reynolds Wrap, Reynolds Kitchens, cookie baking sheets, pre-cut parchment paper. It's basically baking parchment paper. Um, it's kind of like wax paper, but it's more porous, and it's like this, it comes in squares. Uh, and I'll show you how to set it up real quick. All right, they come in squares of four that are uh, hooked together like this and folded up. So all you do is come and cut along these two seams, as close to the seam as you can get. Right here, cut one, and hold this together, cut two. And you magically have four pieces of parchment paper you can use. So like a pack of those things of the paper costs like three bucks and you get a couple dozen of these. So you can make dozens and dozens of, of sheets of parchment paper to use. Uh, next step, it's very easy. This is the way I like to do it. Um, you're gonna put water, you're gonna wet this thing and put this on top, but once it's, if it's wet like this, it'll start to curl up if it's, if it's dry and wet in the bottom, like that. What I like to do, and people, some people say they don't like this, they don't do it. I don't care what you do, this is what I do, and I find it work very well. I put the parchment paper down on the plastic part, uh, band of the, of the um, what do you call it, the, the wet palette. I put the sponge on top of it. Um, the sponge is damp, so I just use it and wash it up. Then what I do, I fill the wet palette with a little bit of water like this, and I let it set for you know two or three minutes just to let the uh, water kind of permeate and soak into the membranes of the paper, and then we'll come back. So let's wait two or three minutes, we'll come right back. All right, it's been a few minutes, and now we'll do this, we'll drain this out. Let me get the lid of, I think this is a nice lid, the clips on top to keep it nice and moist when you're not using it. Get the lid, see this parchment paper, how it's nice and saturated. Boom, let me get it here, I'm gonna put it here for one second. I'll lay this guy down, nice and flat, I'm gonna get it centered in the Thing, so there's room. Um, if you buy a sponge and it's too big, because sometimes the sponges are smaller than expand, you can always just cut it down to size if you need to get a replacement sponge, by the way. So see how the paper's nice and pliable? Now it's gonna stick on there nice and well. Do, do, do. Um, and get that centered as much as you can. Now you're gonna see air bubbles. We're gonna get a very special tool. A special tool is called a spatula from the dollar store that has a handle broken off so that it fits my art bin. And all we're gonna do is just move it up the, around the edges, kind of like a screen protector on a phone. Uh, and you're just gonna get the air bubbles out. Doo -doo -doo. In a previous video, I had shown uh, me taking the air bubbles out when, it, when, the, when the wet palette was drier and didn't mention how much to make, make it wet for painting and someone freaked out about that. So this video is here to uh, <laughs> fix that air. So long story short, you get wet palette here. It's got a good amount of water. Uh, you want the wet palette wet while you're painting. Um, so what you wanna do is you wanna keep, I keep a, a bottle like this uh, around the edge of my painting table for wetting various things, but see how the water's kind of dancing around the edges and there, you want it at least that wet where there's some water here so that it's actually, the, the paper is sitting on a wet sponge. And if it gets dried out throughout the day, you just wet the edges like this. And there you go, that's a, that's a good wet, wet palette. See that, it's got a little bit, it's got water on the edges. That's what you want. You, you, you can fill it up pretty high without it, without it leaking onto the thing. You just don't want to fill up so high that it, you know, does a tidal wave in the water. But that's it, that's, that's the wet palette. Um, and then I'll show you real quick how to use it. What I like to do once I get it set up, I'll just wipe it down with a paper towel to get any excess water on top, because the water's coming through the small the small holes in the parchment paper to keep it wet. You don't need a, you don't need a pool of water on it. So you're gonna paint a miniature. This is a, uh, this is a carrying crawler I printed. It's, I broke the antennas off of. So he <laughs> says a demo. You just get your acrylic paint, you know, whichever your favorite brand is some Vallejo heavy blue right here. Shake it up. And how I use the wet palette is just put, what I do is I put a drop, to, you know, drop or two of paint right here. Maybe a couple, like a nice little blob. Um, and 
then wet your paintbrush. Just a little bit. Okay, I get a little wet paintbrush. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna dip your paint, your, your brush in the paint right here, sir, and then you're gonna take a little miniature blob and then just kind of right there, you work it in. It, that way you have a nice fresh res reservoir of thick you know, paint that's 100% paint. This is paint mixed with the water that's coming through the palette. If you wanna mix it down even more, you can push, you can push harder, or not harder, but, but more, and you can make more of a glaze if you want. You've seen um, other videos online of people doing this. You can also put a drop of water on there to like, if you wanna have a section that's even thinner, you can drop it to thin it with water. But usually the water coming through the palette is enough, um, as long as you keep your palette hydrated, to be paint that you can apply to a miniature and it goes on nice, smooth, not too wet, not too dry. If you if this gets too wet, you can always go to the main thing here and put the main reservoir of, of paint here and add more and then thicken it up and it makes it a little bit thicker so it's not running. It's a nice thick paint. All right, so that's it. That's wet palettes when you're done for the day. You cover this up. You can leave it cracked open a little bit to let it breathe or you can click it all the way down if you want it airtight. And then the next you know, next morning or next day, you can come make sure that it's hydrated in the sides. If it's not, hydrate the sides with your squirt bottle um, and you're good to go. I'll put links to all this stuff in the uh, video description for this video. Thanks a lot for watching.